damn it. Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today I'm going to show you something that we've all been having fun with over here on the Hartford Meshtastic Mesh. It's called the Meshtastic Freak Machine. So if you're watching this video and you don't know what Meshtastic is yet, go check out some links in the description where I introduce you to Meshtastic. But basically it's a way of using small devices like this that are off grid that just use radio waves to communicate with each other. And there's a lot of stations in the UK now, so you can join in the fun just by getting some cheap hardware either like this, or you can use little development boards like this, put together your own node, stick it up in the loft somewhere, and then join in the mesh. So the whole point of Meshtastic is that it's a text messaging system, which basically doesn't rely on the internet, and you can send messages on a public channel, which we're looking at here. And it's been really interesting in the UK because we've managed to sort of create a really good community of like-minded people that are interested in this kind of off-grid messaging system and it's been really fun look you can see lots of conversation happening here some of it goes on till early hours of the morning um, and it reminds me a little bit of cb radio back in the old days now the thing is meshtastic is quite a technical hobby and if you want to do well with it you do kind of need to learn some radio skills and that's what i've been doing on this channel lately trying to help people with their meshtastic journey so one of the things with meshtastic is when you send a message out you don't necessarily know that anyone's actually received that message because whilst on direct messages there are some kind of delivery report features they don't always work and if you're on a public channel you send a message out and you don't really know who's actually received that until now. So a little while ago now, a very clever guy called Liam Cottle put together this map, which basically shows you all of the nodes that are around, so all of the Meshtastic stations. But more than that, it actually allows you to drill into each station and actually see messages that have been arriving at that station. So if we look here, We'll see that Royden Rook here is having a nightmare with his car, 900 quid, that is not good. But yeah, this shows you all of the messages that are arriving at my station here in Hartford. That's pretty neat. Now I have shown this before, but what if we could actually go one step further and show all of the nodes on one page so we can see where the messages are getting in real time? That would give us some real insight into how the messages are routed and whether they actually get to the destinations they're supposed to. So allow me to introduce you to this, which we've called the Meshtastic Fruit Machine. Now I'll go into why it's been dubbed the Meshtastic Fruit Machine by us lot over here in a minute. Um, but this is the hard work of basically Subnet and also Colin Nismo has been working on this as well and um, Royden I think has, has helped out on this as well so it's a bit of a team effort from the lads over here um, but effectively what this does is it just shows you all the stations in our mesh well most of the stations in our mesh that are connected to um, Liam Cottle's map and yeah it just literally grabs the message feeds puts them in an iframe on a web page so you can see all of the messages in real time. Now, why it's been called a fruit machine is because of this. I'm gonna send a strawberry out, so you'll see a strawberry arrive at Hartford, and then hopefully you'll see it arrive at the other stations as well, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So this has become a bit of an entertainment thing, and everyone's just been totally addicted to this. So you can see, you know, I haven't quite got a full house, but um, Brian on the hill at Caterham is actually is actually quite a difficult station to reach. So when I send a strawberry out, I'll expect in a minute some, some other users will come out and, um, and say something here. But <laughs> it's just been quite funny, this, to say the least. But also, it's showing that our mesh is actually working quite well. I'm going to spin again watermelon this time. But I love the way that you see the messages obviously propagate across the network. Um, and if we can get a full house, this would be really good for the video. But I feel we might not. Yeah, Brian in catering does have some interference issues as well, so that doesn't help. Neil's just thrown a pineapple out there. Let me see, same situation. Oh, he's actually got a full house. Brilliant. Unfortunately, this fruit machine doesn't pay out. But you can see on a dark winter's evening, this could actually be quite entertaining for a bunch of grey old men like us. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, the cool thing about this page is it doesn't need to be hosted anywhere because all it's doing is scraping information off of um, Liam's site here. So you can just change these links in the HTML file um, to show which nodes you want to actually get a message feed from. So anyone can basically make a page like this um, and it will just work on a smartphone. I've kind of adapted mine a little bit so that it kind of, you know, it, it all fits on the screen of a smartphone phone so my my heights are like 150 and and um, that sort of thing so so it's a really easy thing to modify and I'll leave the source code below so you can make your own pages as well 
There's another page here that Colin's put together for the London mesh as well, so you can see all the London stations. Um, it's not all of the London stations, but the ones that are, are kind of participating on this, and you can do it too. If you check out my other video, I think it's the Map Tools one, I'll show you how to set this up. It's really easy. There's instructions on Liam Cottle's site as well to how to do this. And there is a Bedfordshire page as well. Oh, look, one of my messages has got to Milton Keynes. Someone has actually replied as well. Sorry about that. I didn't notice that. But now I've got access to these pages. I can see these messages coming in real time, so I know someone sending me a message. I know it's kind of cheating, or is it really? Because you're not using this to send messages, you're just using it to see potential messages that have come. You're still sending messages using your devices. And I mean, most of the time I'm using my completely offline um, T-Deck Plus to send messages on Meshtastic. Um, you know, I, I try to not use the smartphone as much as I can. Now that's the whole point of Meshtastic. It's meant to be kind of off grid. But in these early days where we're trying to sort of, you know, diagnose the mesh, get it to work as well as possible. And this, this is really helpful. These tools are really, really helpful to kind of, you know, make this thing actually work. A couple of hours last night, I was just using this to message. I wasn't even looking on these tools because I had confidence that the messages were at least getting to where, you know, they are supposed to be getting to. Uh, maybe not every time, but you know, most most of the messages are getting out there. So yeah, even though it's not completely off grid, it's not using the internet to send messages or get the messages um, to the other end at all. It's just you looking through a window in effect and see. It just gives you eyes onto other people's nodes because of course, remember that not everybody's sitting there waiting for a message to come in and will reply straight away. So when you send a message out and you say, well, there's nodes in my area, but no one's replying, or well, they might just be at work or something. So, you know, there is that to it as well. So for those of you interested in the sort of coverage of the mesh in the UK southern side um, is at the moment. It's kind of this area, really. Um, you know, we're seeing stations up in Milton Keynes receive some of the messages there, the sort of Bedford area. Um, all of these stations around here generally are getting messages from our mesh. That's my node there. Um, you know, we've got Caterham over the other side, Brian, and he, he generally beams across this entire area in the centre of London um, and, you know, to the outskirts as well. And we can get occasional messages over to O'Brien. It was probably about 80, 70 percent reliability, I'd say, um, at the moment. Um, and if it hits Brian over here, then it generally kind of will propagate across um, the rest of the mesh. But this sort of top area up here, Harlow, Hoddesdon, uh, Hartford, Welling, Harpenden, and a bit of Hemel Hempstead, that's quite reliable. So that's where we sort of see most of our um, traffic at the moment, and most of the messages are from that sort of area. We're getting up to Bishop Stortford as well over there, so that's kind of good. If you're in Bishop Stortford, grab a node, you'll probably be able to get into the, the main mesh. We really want Stevenage area and more of that side to actually sort of come online. There's not really a lot in that area to actually bridge um, bridge the gaps, and that's why there's not really any route to the, you know, although on this map you see sort of northern stations and, you know, up north it's quite good as well in that sort of Manchester area and Blackpool. But, you know, there there is a, a big hole in the middle, which does which means that we don't really sort of get any messages from kind of up north down here in the south. Um, that being said, do we really want it? Bunch of northerners? No, I'm only joking. If we did link the entire country, then we'd probably have problems with sort of channel utilisation. So at the moment, I'd probably say it's busy enough. Anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope you found it useful. Get tinkering with the pages and make your own um, message lists and stuff so you can see where you're getting and that will really help you with comms in your area. Catch you next time.